Hello friends, my name is Kisan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to look an example of uh, how to work with the Java, a Spring Java West configuration. So we'll take a very simple example. So let's right click on the Eclipse and create a Java project. And here I'm going to write uh, a Spring Java Based config example. Okay, and click on the next button, then click on the finally button. And here I'm going to paste the jars which is required for this example. So basically, uh, I required. Uh, six jars so common logger jars so as we know that a spring has external dependency on common logger so that's why i have copied this jar and uh, there are five extra jars which belongs to the spring distribution file that is beans context context support code and expression so we'll uh, we'll have a look into a very simple concept and there we require only a spring uh, core container right so let's right click on the source and create a class so in package com dot info tech dot model and class name i'm going to specify message and click on the finish and let's add property like private int message id this is the first property and private string message itself and let's click a setters and getters for these two properties okay pretty straightforward so it's a java class now i i want to register this java class uh, in a spring bin container so once you register uh, this class in the a spring container then you can say this is a, a spring bins so but we don't want to use any xml configuration file for that so let's create a java class which is almost equivalent to the configuration file in package com dot info take dot config and i would say message config it's a class name right and this class i'm going to annotate as at the rate configuration as we discussed in the previous slide previous video sorry so configuration sorry i haven't added i mean uh, jars in my class pass so that simply i had copied in the leaf folder so i need to add the jars in my class pass so go to the build path and configure build path select libraries and add, click on the add libraries so this the jars is already in my project but that is not in class pass so let's select all jars and click on the okay now you'll get the uh, auto support now configuration when you annotate a class uh, so let's change the uh, compiler version as well so compiler version by default is 1.4 let's take 1.7 say yes and error has gone so when you annotate a class uh, by at the rate annotation uh, at the rate configuration that means this is almost equivalent to the uh, xml file right now here uh, i'm going to create a method like public and uh, return type would be the message message and i would say get message and explicitly i'm going to create instance of message and that i will return so new Message, right by using default constructor we can create now let's make an import right and this method I'm going to annotate as at the rate bin so this is almost equivalent to when you create a, a configuration file XML configuration file and you write inside the beans you write a bean ID equal to something and you write a class equal to qualified name of this class right so this is almost equivalent to that tag bean tag right and this class is almost equivalent to a configuration file 
now now this class is going to register in a spring uh, container with the name uh, with the id get message whatever is the your method name from that name that will register in the spring container and let's create a client program so here i'm going to create com.infotech.client package and um, we'll give the client class name as a test which will have a main method and here uh, let's try to use application a class is called application sorry application config application context sorry application con application uh, or oh, let me check out what the class name uh, uh, application config Oh, sorry annotation config it's not an application config it's annotation oh no station config application context this is the class i was talking about and uh, let's have a name of this local variable is context equal to null and uh, let's create a try catch block and here if any exception arises then let's print as Call print a stack trace so this will print the entire stack trace and let's have a finally block and there I can check if context uh, not equal to null then we'll close this context right so we need to close the resource in the finally block okay now let's create an instance of this class context equal to new annotation on notation application context and here you can pass this class name this configuration class name you can pass in the constructor and dot class like this okay and if you have a more than one configuration file then this class has a method is called uh, you can see register and you can pass another configuration class so in your jar in your spring you can have a more than one configuration class so right now we have only one configuration file now i would say get bin method and i'm going to use get bin method there are a lot of overloaded get bin methods i'm going to use this method so bin id i'm going to specify by default id of the bin would be method name itself right so bin id i'm going to specify this and here you need to pass the class so this is message dot class right and this will return your instance of uh message which is registered in the spring container right and we can print the uh, message directly and here in message class what i'm going to do i'm going to initialize these two instance variable with a specific value right so let's message id is 1001 and again i'm going to use at the rate value and here again i'm going to initialize some value like hello world okay so these two instance variable i have initialized with particular value and let's run this application and see what output we are getting So we are getting some exception. Let's see what's the exception. Saying that R dot AOP target. So this requires AOP related annotations as well. So let's try to find the AOP related annotations. Uh, I'll keep in the class path. So uh, let me find the AOP annotation as well. Uh, 
and uh, here is the eop related spring related jars so uh, where is my spring related jars i have kept uh, i have kept somewhere here In C drive, somewhere I have kept uh, software, and here is the spring jar. Actually, I have forgotten where I had kept my spring jar, so that's the problem. Here, so here that that is a little different version, but uh, let's see, try it out. So we have to take this AOP and expect these two jars I have to take and let's paste in this leaf folder and add these two jars in class path as well so add jars and go to the leaf and add these two files as well and let's try to run it And here we got the output, but uh, we haven't overridden to a string method in uh, uh, message class. That's why we are not getting proper output. So let's string, let's override to a string method over here. And now you'll get a state of object in nice format. Else, to a string method of object will be called, and we were getting output like this. So now we got the output. So here you can see now there is no configuration file still we are able to retrieve the this bean from the spring container so because of this class this class is basically our configuration file this is almost equivalent to the xml file xml configuration file right and here uh, we have created a, a method that is called get message method and you who return that returns message instance and here explicitly we have created an object of this uh, class right so basically this will uh, here whatever object we are creating over here this will register in the spring container with this name so if you want to specify the particular name then if you see there are a lot of attributes you can specify here like you can see the name so here name is nothing but the you can specify multiple names so here if you specify message then this instance will be registered in the spring container with this name so from client program now you need to retrieve this uh, bean by this id or this name so if i run it then you will be able to get it so here we are getting the output right apart from this attribute there are many more attributes over here right you have auto wire you can apply the auto wire you can see the auto wire there are three types no means there is no auto wire by name and by type you won't get uh, auto wire by constructor over here if you are if you are, if you want to resolve auto wiring by constructor then that will we will see in next video tutorial how we can do that like uh, here you can specify auto wire by name yeah, yeah and apart from this you have many more like you can specify the callback method like destroy and any these things we'll see in next video tutorial no need to be worried so now if i run after this modification if you run then this will work perfectly fine so in this video tutorial just uh, we have uh, taken a very simple example and we try to run this application uh, without using uh, any xml configuration file and we did that one and uh, i hope you enjoyed learning this video and this code i am going to uh, put on the github and github location i will uh, specify in the video description itself in next video tutorial i will uh, go in little more depth and i will try to explain you how we can run a spring project without any xml configuration file right and this approach basically very handy when you work with the i mean a spring boot so a spring boot uh, there is no xml file still you can run so thanks for watching this video and see you in next video tutorial